Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.J. Mays. Let us begin in prayer. Father, we cherish you. Thank you, Father, for all that you do. Thank you for your power and authority and majesty upon our lives as we yield to you, as we go forth in your ways. Father, so many people have been misguided and gone astray from your covenant that you have with us all. But today, let it be the day when they come back to you and do what your will is for their lives. And we thank you and praise you, the living God forevermore, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Spirit of the living God. We love you. The inner workings of Yahweh, we love you. Amen. So we're going to do some more of Jasher. Jasher, Yahweh, ten, ten zeva, which means Yahweh command, Yahweh commands, amen. And where we're going to go is Jasher chapter 48, 1 through 66, 1 through 66 and 48 of Jasher. And it says, in those days after the, the death of Isaac, Yahweh commanded that the cause of famine upon the whole earth. At that time, the Pharaoh king of Egypt was sitting upon the throne in Egypt and was sit, um, in the land of Egypt. And they laid in his bed and dreamed a dream. The Pharaoh saw his dream that he was standing at the river of the side of the river of Egypt. And what he was standing and saw, behold, seven fat, fresh, and well-favored kin came up out of the river. And seven other uh, kin uh, lean, uh, uh, fresh, and ill-favored came up after them. And seven ill-favored ones swallowed up the well-favored ones. And still there was appeared was was ill and as, as at first. And he woke, and he, he slept again, and I dreamed a second time, and he saw and behold seven ears of, of corn came up upon one stalk, raised and was good, seven thin ears blistering with the east wind sprang up after them. And the thin ears swallowed up the full ones, and the Pharaoh woke up out of his dream. And then in the morning, the king remembered his dream, and, and his spirit, and his spirit was sad, sad and troubled, on account of this dream. And the king hastened and sent and called his magicians of Egypt and the wise men, and, and they came and stood before the Pharaoh. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none interpreted of them. And they said unto the king, Relate the dream to thy servant, and let them hear them. And the king related his dream to them, and they all answered and said unto the voice of the king, May may uh, say with one voice to the king liveth forever and this is the interpret of the dream the seven the seven good can uh, with the uh, death uh, see it and denote seven daughters that will be born unto thee see they don't know they need they need they need the prophet of God because he knows. Amen. But these are just fakes. So they're, they're going to come up with some, like they're doing right here. So, uh, seven daughters will be born unto thee and later in the day. And seven kin wh which thou saw come up after that, swallowed them up at, are the signs that the daughters which will be born unto thee will all die in, in the later times of, their, of the kingdom. And which the, thou didst see in second dream, seven full good ears of 
corn coming up upon one stalk. This is interpreted as well built upon thyself. Uh, a, a later day is of seven cities throughout the land of Egypt, and that which thou seest seven blisters of ears of corn spring up after swelling them up, uh, belonging them with thy ears, eyes, and the site, the cities which thou wilt build will all be destroyed in later days in the lifetime of the king. And when they spoke these words, the king did not incline his ears with their words, neither did he fix his heart upon them. The king knew in his wisdom that they did not give proper interpretation of the dream. See? And when they had finished speaking before the king, the king answered to them and saying, What is this thing that you have spoken unto me? Surely you have altered falsehood and spoken lies. Therefore now give the proper interpretations of my dreams, that you may not die. The king commanded after this, and sent and called again for other wise men. And they came and stood before the king, and the king related his dream to them. And they all answered him according to the first interpretation. And the king's anger was kindled, and very, very wroth. And the king said unto them, Surely that you speak lies and alter falsehoods in what you have said. And the king commanded that that a uh, proclamation pro pro should be issued throughout the land of Egypt, saying, It is resolved by the king that is great men and wise men who knoweth and understand the interpretation of dreams will not come this day before the king, he, he shall die. And uh, the, the man that will declare unto the king the proper interpretations of the dream, there shall be given unto him all that will be required from the king. And all the wise men of the land of Egypt came before the king to, together with all the magicians and sorcerers, that were in Egypt and and Goshen and and in Ramses and and in uh, uh, Ch Ch Panish and in Zoar and all the places on the border of Egypt and they all stood before the king and all the nobles and all the prince and all the tenants belonged to the kings came together for all the cities of Egypt. And then all sat before the king, and the king related his dreams before the wise men and the prince, and all that sat before the king, astonished of, at the vision. And all the wise men who were before the king were greatly divided in interpretations of his dream. And some of them interpreted them to the king, and saying, Seven good uh, kind are seven kings who were Kings issued will be raised over Egypt. And the seven kind, bad kinds are the seven princes who will stand up against them in later days and dissolve them. The seven years of corn, the seven are seven great princes belonging to Egypt who will to taller in hands of seven less of power princes of their enemies in war of our Lord the King. See, they, they don't know. Only, the only people that know are, are God's seers and prophets. And some of them interpreted and, and the king in their matter saying, the seven good kinds are uh, uh, strong cities of Egypt. The seven bad are the seven nations that of the land of Canaan who will come against the seven cities of Egypt in later days and destroy them. And then, and, and which thou saw in the second dream, seven good and, and bad ears of corn is the signs that govern of Egypt will again return to thy seed at first. 
and then reign the people of the city of Egypt and will turn against uh, seven cities of the Canaanites who are stronger than they are and will devour, destroy them and the government of Egypt will return to thy seed. And some of them said unto the king, This is the interpretation of thy dream. Seven good kinds of seven queens, whom thou wilt take as wives in latter days, and seven bad kind, denote that those women will all die in a lifetime of the king. The seven good and bad of the ears of corn, which thou didst see, our, our second dream, are. Fourteen children and, and all will be latter days and they will stand up and fight amongst themselves and seven of them will be smitten and seven are more powerful. And some of them said to the, these words unto the king saying, seven good kind of devoted of seven children uh, will be born and, and to thee and they will be slain by seven of thy children in the latter days, and then seven good ears of corn, which thy deceived in the second dream, are those princes against the seven lesser power princes will fight and be destroyed. See, they don't know it. Only the seer of God knows, and the prophets of God. Amen. And them in the latter days, and, and revenge, and thy children cause, and, and governments will again return to thy seed. And the king heard all these words of, and that's what they are, just words, there's no power to them. Um, words of, of wisdom, the men of Egypt had their interpretation to their dreams. And none of them pleased the king, because even the king can see through that, you know, the the Pharaoh can even see through that stuff. And the king knew in his wisdom that they did not altogether speak correctly in all these words. For this was from Yahweh to frustrate the words of the wise men of Egypt. In order that Joseph might go forth from the house of confinement in order that he should become great in Egypt. Amen. And the king saw that none amongst all the wise men of the magicians of Egypt spoke correctly to him. And the king's wrath was kindled, and his anger burnt with him. And the king commanded that all the wise men and magicians should be going out before him. And they all went out before the king with shame and disgrace. And the king commanded that a proclamation be sent throughout Egypt to slay all the magicians that were in Egypt, and not one of them should be suffering to live. And the captains of the guard belonging to the king rose up, and each man drew his sword, and they began to smite all the magicians of Egypt and the wise men. And after this, uh, um, um, Mar Marad, chief butler to the king, came and bowed down before the king and sat before him. So Marad was the chief butler. That was his name, Marad. Okay. And the butler said unto the king, May the king live forever and his government and be exalted in the land. Thou was angry with thy servants in those days and two years past and did place me in, in the ward. And I was some time in the ward and I the chief of the bakers. And there was a Hebrew servant Amen. God was making sure he remembered. Amen. Servant belonging to the captain of the guards. His name was Joseph. For his master had been angry with him, placed him in the house of confinement, and he attended us there. And in some time after then, we were in the ward. 
And he dreamed dream, and one night I and my chief of the bakers, and we dreamed each man according to his interpretation of the dream. And and we came to in the morning and told them to that servant. And he interpreted to us our dreams, and each man according to his dream, and did it correctly interpret. And it was it came to pass that as the interpretation on us, so that the evening there fell not on the ground any of his words. And now therefore, my Lord and King, do not slay the people of Egypt for naughtiness. Behold, the slave it is still confined in the house of the captains of the guards of his master in the house of confinement. And if it pleases, pleases the king, let him send for him that he may, may come before thee and he may make known to thee correct interpretations of the dreams which thou did dream. And the king heard the words of the uh, chief butler and the king ordered that the wise men of Egypt should not be slain. And the king ordered his servant to bring Joseph before him. And the king said unto him, Go to him. Do not terrify him, lest that he uh, com confess and will not know to speak properly. And the servant of the king went to Joseph, and they went and brought him, hastened out of the dungeon. And the king's servant uh, shaved him, and he changed his prison garments, and he gave him kingly garments. And the king was sitting upon his royal throne, and a pr princely dress uh, girded around him, a gold ephah. And the fine gold with was upon his um, sparkling. And Compubines and and the rubies and and emeralds and and together with all precious stones that were upon the king's head, dazing the, the eyes. And Joseph wondered greatly at the king, and the throne upon which the the king sat was covered with gold, silver, onyx stones, and it was uh, seventy steps. And it was their custom through all the land of Egypt that every man who came to speak to the king, if he was was a prince or one that was in, in uplifted in the sight of the king, he assumed to the king's throne as far as uh, 30 steps. And the king was uh, destined to the uh, 36 step and spoke with him. It, 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 it is he was one of the uh, command of the people and he assumed to the third step. And the king would uh, denounce to the fourth and speak into him. And their custom was moreover that any man who understood to speak in all the the seventy of languages, he ascended the seventy of step and went up and spoke till he reached the king. And any man who uh, could not complete the seventy of, he assumed as many steps as the languages which he knew and speaketh. And it was customary in those days of Egypt that no one should reign over them. But who understands to speak the 70, of, 70, 70 languages? And when Joseph came before the king, he bowed down to the ground before the king, and he assumed to the 30th step. And the king sat upon the fourth step and spoke to Joseph. And the king said unto Joseph, I dreamed a dream. And there is no interpretation for the interpret of the of the dream. And I commanded this day that all the magicians of Egypt, the wise men, therefore, should come before me 
and I relate my dream to them, and no one has properly interpreted them to me. After this, I this day I heard and and uh, and concerned thee that thou art wise man and can correctly interpret the dreams that I have heard us. And Joseph answered the Pharaoh, saying, Let the Pharaoh relate his dreams that he, he dreams. Surely the interpretation belongs to God. And the Pharaoh related the dreams to Joseph, and the dream of the, the kin, and, and the dream of the ears of corn. And the king left off and speaking. And Joseph was then clothed with the Spirit of God before the king. And he knew all the things that would befall the king and that day forward. And he knew the, the pr proper interpretation of the king's dream and spoke before the king. And Joseph found favor in the sight of the king. And the king in inclined his ears and his heart and he heard the, all the words of Joseph. And Joseph said unto the king, Do not in, imagine that they, they are two dreams, for it is only one dream. For that which God has chosen to do throughout the land, he has shown the king in his dream. And this is the proper interpretations of this dream. The seven good kin of of heirs of corn are seven years, seven years of bad kings of heirs of corn are also seven years in one dream. Behold, the seven that are coming, there will be great plenty throughout the land. And after that, their seven years of famine will follow them, very grievous famine. And all of the plenty will be forgotten from the land. And the famine will consume all that inhabits of the land. The king dreamed one dream. The dream was therefore uh, repeated upon the Pharaoh because the things is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore, I will give thee Counsel and deliver thy soul and the soul of the inhabitants of the land from the evil of the famine that thou uh, seeks throughout thy kingdom for men very discreet uh, and wise who knoweth all the affairs of the government and point them to be sup uh, superiors over the land of Egypt. And let, let the men, the man who Thou uh, place over Egypt, appoint officers upon them. And, and they gather in all the food, the good years that are coming. And let them lay up corn and deposit in the in appointed stores. And let them keep the food for seven years of the famine that is may be found for thee and thy people and thy whole land and thou and thy land be not cut off from the famine let all the inhabitants of the land be also ordered that they gather in every man produce in his field and all sort of food during the seven good years that they place it on their stores that it may be found for them in, in the days of the famine, that they live upon it. This is a proper interpretation of thy dream. And this is a counsel given to save thy soul and the souls of all thy subjects. And the king answered and said unto Joseph, who saith and, and who knoweth thy words are correct. And he said unto the king, this is, this shall be the sign for thee, respectfully, all my words, that they are true, that my vice is good for thee. Behold, my thy wife sitteth this day 
on, upon the stool of delivery. And she will bear thee a son, and thou wilt rejoice with him. And, and thy son shall have gone forth from his mother's womb, and the firstborn son that has been born these two years shall die, and, and thou wilt be confronted in, in the child that will be born upon thee this day. And Joseph finished speaking these words to the king, and he bowed down to the king, and he went out. And when Joseph went, went down out of from the king's presence, those signed with Joseph had spoken upon the king, came and passed on the day. And the queen bore a son on that day, and the king heard and gladly tidings about his son, and rejoiced. And when the reports had gone forth, the king presented and, and the king's servants found the firstborn son of the king fallen dead upon the ground. And there was great lamentation and, and noise of the king's house. And the king heard of it, and the king uh, and, and the king heard of that that his firstborn was dead. And when the king knew that all of Joseph's words that he had spoken was correct, the king was uh, consoled for his son by his children that was born to him. And on that day, Joseph had spoken. Amen. So there you go. Because so previously, Joseph had to learn that you cannot be this 99 percent with God you got to be a hundred percent got to work on that one percent and he did and and therefore his mind and his heart was right with God's spirit and he could interpret the dream for the for the king the correct way not only interpret but on uh, interpret what's going to happen the next day to a, his firstborn son but also to the, the, the son that would be born, the second one that would be born that day as well. And so this this will show you that you we need to understand that what God does before, he'll do again. In a sense, this nation called America has had seven good years. But the world is about ready to go into a great, great, trouble and only those that have been the last seven years all over the earth have been building up their ways before God will survive what's coming because the seven years and the sense is up and now there, there will come time of times and only the people that have built up their spiritual storehouse that will survive what's coming. Mark my words. It's just not disacquittance that I read this, but all things are in, in God's hands and timings. And I tell you this day, there's, there's a time of times coming where things are, are going to be hard all over this earth, like you never heard of. You might say the last seven years has been good. But now it'll be changing. And those that have built their hearts in the right places with God and not with worldly things will survive what's coming. So it's been said, well, be done. Let me tell you, there's many things coming. And we must get right with our Creator. Because God will have grace for those that repent this day. Maybe you're one of them that has not been building for, for a long time. A storehouse in your hearts, right with your king, the king of glory of all kings, God Almighty of, of this throne. You have not followed the spirit of God. You not obeyed God's word like you should have. But now is the time to repent.
Now is not the time to be lukewarm because I tell you what is coming. You're going to be very sad indeed. Those that have not built themselves up properly in the ways of God. Amen. So I'm going to give you the prayer. You pray it and get saved. Especially you look warm out there. Get saved. Get right with the King of Glory. For God loves you. Pray this prayer. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body. As Lord and Savior of my life, love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. With all our hearts, we love you, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. For he loves you. He loves you greatly. And the warning is cried out. Now you must do what's right. You must build yourself in the righteousness deeds of God. For the day of judgment is coming. The day of judgment. The day of fierce judgment over the land of the living of the earth is here. But also revival. And I tell you this day. One of the two you will receive either judgment or revival. If you have built yourself up in the ways of God and you have not sought the things of men and women over the things of God and you sought God out every day in spite of what your surroundings or what has happened to you, if you sought the, in the good and the bad times, then revival will happen. But if you have not, judgment is at the door. For all those that have not. For this is what's going to happen. And it will happen soon. This next year. So repent. Repent for the living God. Has spoken these things to me. And now has allowed me to re relay them. Openly. So all can behold these things. I'm telling you the truth. Prepare the way of Yahweh. Prepare the way of God's spirit and do what God wants. No more lukewarm, O church. No more lukewarm, O synagogue. Be on fire with the king of glory. Be in holiness. Be in steadfastness. As the word says, be of the father's business. Amen. God bless you. May God bless you. May God bring you back to where you need to be and do what God wants. Because those that don't do what God wants, they will receive God's judgment next year. There is a famine coming. It has already taken place. It already started. It will be all over the earth. Mark my words. The earth will grow. The earth will shake. The things in outer space will come down. What will you trust in when the governments tumble and fall? Will you trust in the living God? Have you been built up with God's word or just foolish words of men and women of this earth? Or will you build up with the psalmness of things of praise? And knowing that the living God has, always takes care of his own and will always use his own when times and troubles come. Do you not know this? I tell you these things in love and devotion back to God you must do. God loves you. Stop these things. Repent, all you nations of the world, for the living God has ought against all of you. For you have built treasures of among yourselves and not of treasures of among the things that God has uh, given unto you. You have taken it and stripped them from the people. All the good things that they should have had. Do not do these things no more. Do not be evil anymore in God's sight or the man's sight or woman's sight. O nations of the world. Be repentant. Do what's right. For maybe God will send a blessing to your nation that repents. But woe to the nations who do not repent. For the living God has ought with you. And judgment will fail every nation that does not repent this day. So be right and be good. Follow God's ways for the living God loves you. I love you enough to do this and, and, and be a servant to you to tell you the truth 
the living God wants you to repent, people. Repent. Turn from their wicked ways. Turn to the living God. Shalom to you. God bless. Shalom. 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 Hold it brings peace that passes on his city. Never broken. Never complete. Always complete in God. And be upon thy lives now and forevermore. Completeness in God. Because you'll never be complete in the things of this world. Because it's through the power of God that you are complete. Shalom. Be at peace and do what God wants every day. My fellow brethren, do what's right. Do what's right now. Be on fire. Get ready for God's glory and judgment for it befells this world very soon. Very soon. Very, very soon. Before even this year ends, you will know. You'll see more and more of the signs and we'll go in the next year. And you will know. You will know. And you will give God the glory. No man shall get it. Amen. Shalom.